Welcome, my name is Adrian Alexander with The Absolute Sound. Before we get started, I'd like to thank all of you for your kind words and comments. And thank you for watching the channel and thank you for viewing my videos. One of the reasons I like this hobby so much is it forces me to open my mind. And what, I, what do I mean by that? Well, once I, when I got back into listing the vinyl, of course, that's two channel. And I, you know, that's the format that I grew up on. So I vinyl this, vinyl that, it had to be vinyl because it sounds warm and it sounds pure. I'm gonna segue into a good friend of mine uh, who I've known for 25 years. Now, this guy eats, drinks, and sleeps this stuff. And so do I, but not to the degree of him. I'll give you an example. If he buys a brand new DAC, he'll take it apart and uh, look at it and call me and tell me, you know, they use this circuit board and this capacitor. He's just crazy about it. So I, I tell you this because it's probably five or six years ago. I remember I was on the phone with him and I said, oh, I, I'm loving vinyl again. It sounds great. I love tube amplifiers. I like the monoblocks and all that. And he said, you know, if digital's done right, it sounds good. First thing I did is like, okay, here we go down the rabbit hole. So, so that being said, we're gonna segue into the review today of the PS Audio Stellar Gold DAC. Let's take a look at the front of the DAC. Notice the gold trim, hence the word Stellar Gold DAC. To me, it's aesthetically pleasing and a very nice touch. I was surprised by the weight of the DAC. It's 22 pounds, however, it felt like it weighed 30, five to 40 pounds to me. Very solidly built, built like a tank, very nice design. Let's take a look at the DAC with the power on. I think the blue lights adds a nice touch and it's aesthetically pleasing. By the way, you can also dim the blue lights if that's your preference. The PS Audio DAC is $4,000. As I've mentioned, I've owned other DACs before, and one of the things that used to drive me nuts is the DACs didn't come with a remote. PS Audio provides a remote, and it's great. It fits well in your hand, backlit buttons, very easy to use, very easy to control, and very easy to read. They did a nice job designing this remote. A couple things I wanna share with you. If you'll notice on the screen, you'll see it says I square one. Of course, that's an input, but if you look to the right, you'll notice the red dot. The red dot indicates that there is nothing, there's not a signal going to that. I'm going to hit I square two, as you can see, there's no signal. Coax one, there is no signal. Coax two, there's the signal. That will lock in and eventually will show you the sample rate. There it is. I'm gonna to go to optical, no signal. USB, no signal. I think that's a nice feature. I like the display. Now you can turn that off, but I personally like it. I think it, uh, you know, my eyes aren't what they used to be. And I think that, you know, the size of it, I can see it. It's just, it's just a nice feature. Now, obviously I'm controlling this from the remote control, but if you look to the right, you can see that circular button. You can do it that way if that's what you prefer to do. Another feature it has is the phase filter. If you look to the left, you'll see that, that, that emblem that just came on, that refers to the phase. That turns the phase on, the phase is off. Once again, phase on, phase off. Another feature that I enjoy about the Stellar DAC is the filters, and it's displayed. So we're gonna run through these real quick. There are seven filters. I preferred the first filter. Sorry, it's just switched back to USB. But let's go to the first filter. There you go. You can see that. The second filter. The third filter. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth filter. And seventh filter. Now, you'll have to read the manual, describe what it, what it does, and how it affects the sound. I preferred the first filter, just for, rec for the record. Let's take a look at the back of the unit. As you can see, you can see the PS link. You can link to other PS audio systems. It has two trigger outs. As far as the digital inputs, it has a USB, fiber optical input, 
two digital inputs, coax, also two I squared inputs. It has analog outputs, balanced, and RCA. I happen to run it balanced, and I happen to use the digital coax input and the I square input, and I will address that later, what I thought sounded better. One of the features I liked about the Stellar Gold DAC is, if you'll notice the 100 on the screen, this is the fixed volume feature. Fixed volume means the volume cannot be changed and all inputs are affected by this. It's a, it's a useful sitting when sitting up the Stellar Gold DAC I found into a preamplifier. I want to share this tweak with you. For those of you that have fiber coming into your home, I happen to have fiber in my home. So I own an audio file switch with two FSP inputs. I purchased a gigabyte ethernet media converter so I could convert the signal into fiber. And I did notice an improvement. Now, look, if you don't have fiber running in your home, it's not a big deal. It was probably a slight improvement. But if you have it, it's, it's a nice tweak. It worked well for me. But if you don't, don't, don't worry about it too much. I just wanted to share this with you. Um, something that I did and you may want to try or may not want to try. So if you have that option, something I would suggest. So setting up the DAC was relatively easy. It took maybe a total of five, six minutes. So again, out of the box, it sounded fantastic. Nice sound stage, great separation. As I listened to the DAC, I let it burn in and I listened to it every 50 hours, uh, increments of 50 hours, and I burned it in a total of 200 hours. But between the 50 hours, it sounded better and better. The sound stage sounded very quiet. It was quiet in the background. The instruments came alive. It just was a nice, pleasant sound. This is the first chip DAC bass that I listened to that I had a chance to evaluate and listen to. The other DACs that I listened to sounded great. The R2R DACs, quote unquote, that should sound more like analog. But what I noticed about this DAC versus the R2R DACs in my system is just the sound stage was huge and the music samples, they were just tight and the background was black and just, just the little nuances I could hear, just like little cymbals or little echoes off the, the acoustic treatments in the studios for the backup singers, that all came out with this DAC in my system. Again, this DAC worked very well in my system, so did the other DACs, but I preferred this DAC for a number of reasons. One of them is the I-square uh, input. It just simply synced up I noticed with some of the other DACs that I used that offered that, sometimes I'd have to, sometimes it, it wouldn't sync up and the left channel would play in the wrong channel and vice versa. And I had to use a test disc to see, to get the channels to separate and to get the balance. So this thing synced up simply. It just, it was simple. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the Absolute Sound magazine, which we've been publishing for over 50 years. For $20 per year in print, or $10 per year in digital magazine format, you get 11 issues, each with around 100 pages of exclusive equipment reviews, music reviews, and buyer's guides. You also get early access to our three awards issues, Editor's Choice, Products of the Year, and Golden Ear. To subscribe, enter this URL in your browser or go to theabsolutesound.com and click on the subscribe button. Thanks, and now back to the show. So let me describe the music I listen to. One of the groups, it's called Sonia Dada, and the song is Lester's Methadone Clinic. I heard this song last spring at Expona. I was walking in and they were playing this song and I'm like, what is that? What is that song? And I, and I made a note of it and when I got back, I started listening to it. So when I started to listen to Lester's Methadone Clinic, it starts out with like a bebop groove. It's, it, I imagine probably four people on a street corner uh, singing out loud with a fire in a garbage can, but it starts out that way and then the piano comes in and then the whole band starts to come in. And it's just an incredible recording because you can hear little nuances 
you can hear where the microphone, the voice of, of one of the background singers, I, I, could, I could hear the reflection, how it bounced off, and how tight it is, and how it's arranged. It's a great song, and it really, it's great to demonstrate how good your system can sound, because there's a bunch of things going on, and you have to really pay attention, but it, it, I was blown away by that. And listening to it again in my system with the PS Audio DAC, I was just, wow, the soundstage was huge. I talk about soundstage a lot, and again, I like mid-range, but the voices come clear in the background. It, it's just a great song. So I would recommend listening to that. Another song I listened to, uh, it's from Todd Rundgren, Something Anything is the album, and the song is Hello, It's Me. Now this song is recorded in 1972. Some of you may have heard it, some of you may have listened to it. I always liked the song. What I didn't know is that the version I heard on the radio isn't the original version. The original version, and this is why it sounded so good, is they're in the studio and you can hear the tape rolling and the engineer uh, talking and they've got the background singers and they've got all the instruments getting set up and they're doing the count off and as they start to go into the song they'll go one two three four and four when when the female vocal says four I could hear it over my head now with other Dax I couldn't hear that it's as though she was standing behind me but they start into the song and the rhythm starts to kick in the bass guitar kicks in the background singers, the piano starts to open up and the stage just widens in the depth. And it's just a great sounding song, just by the way it's arranged too. And you can hear some subtleties, the trumpet comes in, it's real light, real smooth. It's an, it, I really enjoyed the song, but I really enjoyed the intro because it's though you were sitting in front of the mixing board in the studio and people are giggling and laughing, but it comes together it's just well arranged and it sounds good. The last two songs I spoke about, uh, the sample rate was 44 kilohertz and the other one was 192. So I wanted to listen to some DSD files, which I have some, some of those. So I don't know if you've ever heard of this album. It's uh, called Kinda Blue by Miles Davis. Just kidding. But I happen to have that on a 256 DSD file. And my favorite song is Flamenco Sketches. So I was listening to that. I like the part with the saxophones, Cannibal Adderley on the right channel, and then when it goes to Don John Coltrane on the left channel. Well, what I noticed in that track was when John Coltrane starts to play a saxophone, I immediately thought, I hadn't heard that before. That sounds like a real saxophone. It's a great recording, but it's like the mic was right here and the saxophone, I could hear it. It sounded like a saxophone. Now, other other DACs that I used, it didn't have that clarity and it didn't have that depth. And it, you, you, could hear his, you could hear his lips on the reed as he was blowing the saxophone. It, it was incredible. So PS Audio does not have dealers. You can buy direct from them. Now I always speak about customer service because it's important to me because you're spending a lot of money and you wanna, you, if you have questions, you wanna be able to talk with someone. I called a few times and asked them some questions about the DAC and they were great. I remember one time they said, hold on for a minute, that's a good question, let me go to the engineer and ask him the answer. So I waited for five minutes, they came back, gave me the answer. You know, they remind me of, of my neighbors, some of my neighbors. I get this feeling, they treat you like family, they're just kind and nice. And honestly, full disclosure, I had met them back at the Expona show uh, this past spring, last spring, and they were just really inviting and just nice. And I watched how they treated everybody that they dealt with. Now, some would argue, oh, that's because they're, they want to sell you something. No, I, th I think they're genuine. And that's been my experience. So I didn't mention anything about a review. I just had a few questions. They answered them. Again, their customer service is top, top notch. The PS Audio DAC, I enjoyed listening to it. I had a lot of fun with it. It brought out sounds and nuances and different instruments that I hadn't heard before. But I want to be clear about that. Again, I started going up the DAC chain a few years ago and I'd, I've owned five DACs and this one is the first chip DAC that I've sat down and really listened to and evaluated. So if you're new and you want to get into digital, I think this is the sweet spot. In the beginning of this video, I spoke about a friend that told me, you know, if digital is done right, it can sound really good. And you know what? He was right. PS Audio did it right. The DAC's incredible, it sounds great. Well, I've opened my mind up to digital because it's not the digital from the 80s when it was just you know harsh sounding. You'd have your buddies tell you how harsh a CD sounded and they, they don't even like music. 
but it's the digital of the day and, it, and it's, uh, it's a great option to have and I appreciate that I have it. And again, I appreciate you guys for watching this video. Thank you.